Okay, good. So in this video, we're going to look at independent events, right? And I'll explain what an independent event is. Um, before the end of this video, you're going to know how to prove whether an event is independent or not, using a very simple calculation. Now, for your leave insert, you'll just be asked, prove whether an event is independent or not. And again, by that very simple calculation, you'll be able to find out whether it is independent or not. However, while I could just teach you how to prove it, um, I, I really want you to understand the concept of independent events. Okay? Because there's no point in learning how to do something if we don't know why we're doing it, or what the process or the concept is behind it. Okay, so um, to teach you what an independent event is, we're going to look at this classroom. Okay, so let's just take it, it's a second year class. Okay, second year class in a school. And in this second year class, art and business, they're not compulsory. Okay, you can do them if you want. And we have 60 students in the class, in second year group. Right, what I want to do is I want to find out what the probability is. So if I went into the room and all the students were in that room or into the hall and I picked a student at random, what would the probability of picking a student that studies business be? And we have 16 students who study business and we have 8 students who study both. So that would be 24 students who, out of 60 who study business studies. And that will be simplified to 2 over 5. So we have a 2 and 5 chance of getting a business student. So the probability of business. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to concentrate on the art students. Okay, there they are there. So here's the kids, students, who do just art, and these guys here do both, so they do art as well. Right. Now, in order for me to find out whether the events, art and business, are dependent on each other or independent, I'm going to have to find out the probability of getting a business study student when I just choose from the students who do art. Okay. In other words, I want to find out if there's a relationship between art and business. I want to find out, are they dependent on each other? So very simply put, I want to find out, have I more of a chance of picking a business study student when I just concentrate on these art students? Or have I less of a chance of getting a business study student when I concentrate on these art students? Or have I the same chance of getting a business study student when I concentrate on the art students as I had when I concentrated on the whole class? Right? So we're just going to see that first. So we look at our art students here in yellow. Now I'm going to find out the chances of getting a business study student when I just concentrate on the art. So, how many art students are there? Well, there's 12 and 8, which is 20. And how many of those study business? 8. And that will become 4 over 10, which is 2 over 5. Now, look at this. If I look at the whole class, all of the class, including the people who study none, people who study business, both and art. So if I take the whole class, my chances of getting a business study student is 2 over 5. However, if I just take the people who do art, so these people up here again, look, all those people, and I look for my chances of getting a business study student, it's still 2 over 5. Okay, so after looking at an event, or two events that were independent, let's have a look at um, events that mightn't be independent. So in this we have um, a group of students, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, there's 20 of them. Okay. Right. Some of the students well, they were shooting for basketballs and they were shooting to score a penalty. So these students scored the basket. 
these students scored penalty, these students scored both, and these students scored none. And I suppose in finding if these in the, these um, events, the basketball and the penalty shots, in looking to see if they're independent or dependent, we have to ask ourselves, if I say take um, look for the probability of a student scoring a penalty, if I choose from the whole lot of the group and look at that probability, and then if I just take the students who scored the basket and picked from those, would the probability of getting a student who scored a penalty be the same? Okay, so let's have a look. Let's look at um, students who scored a penalty. So I want to see if I chose from this group of 20, what's my probability of picking a student who scored a penalty? Well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine students who scored a penalty. So the probability of scoring the penalty equals 9 out of 20. Okay, now what if I just concentrate on the people who scored the basket? So here they are. So if I just take those and now I look for the probability of choosing a guy who scored a penalty. Well this would be the probability scoring a penalty given that they scored a basket. Okay, well let's see. How many all together scored a basket? Well, it's all in this circle. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And how many scored the penalty in this group? Well, it's these people, they scored a penalty as well which is a half, okay? And you know what? Because this is in 20, it's, I put this in 20. It's. Now, are they the same? No, they're not the same. And that means if I choose, if I take the whole group and pick someone and see what's the chances of that person getting a penalty, it's nine out of 20. However, if I just concentrate on the people who scored a basket, choose someone from that and see what the probability of those people scoring a penalty is. It's 10 out of 20. Now 10 out of 20 is a better probability than 9 out of 20. So what I'm saying here is if I actually just choose the people who scored a basket I have a better chance of choosing one of them um, that scored a penalty rather than taking the whole class and choosing someone from the class and seeing if they scored a penalty. Okay, So that means there is a dependence there. Okay, let's do it again now. This time we will concentrate on scoring a basket. Okay, we've already proved now that these events are independent. Sorry, dependent. Okay, so let's look at the chance of scoring a basket. So probability of scoring a basket. Well, um, there is 20 people, 20 students, and how many of them scored a basket? Well, there's four of them that just scored a basket, and there's four of them scored both. So it's 8 out of 20, which is 2 out of 5. Okay, now we're going to look for the probability of getting a basket, or getting the person who scored a basket. given that they already scored a penalty. So we're going to concentrate on these people who scored a penalty. We're going to look at the probability of them getting a basket. People who scored a penalty, uh, 9. People who scored a basket, these four also scored a basket. So 4 over 9. 4 over 9 is different to 2 over 5. So we have proven twice there that this, these two events, this scoring a basket and scoring a penalty, they are not independent. Okay? I have more of a chance of getting a person or choosing a person who scored a penalty if I just focus on the people who scored a basket and choose from them 
rather than taking the whole class and choose its own from, from all the class. Okay? If you look at this, this is the test we prove, or the test we use to prove whether events are independent or not. Okay? Now this is a very, very easy test. Right? There's, there's nothing um, too hard about this. And in fact, the lucky or the, I suppose the good thing for you is if you don't understand all this up here, okay, now I hope you do, but if you don't, I suppose this is the question you're going to get, the type of question you're going to get in the leave insert. So you can really just learn off this method okay, because they will only ask you, you know, see if um, something like art and business are independent events. Here's how we prove it, here's our test. If the probability of A intersection B is the same as the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B, then the events are independent. Or if the probability of A intersection B is not equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B, then the events are dependent or not independent. Okay, so let's go. Let's test and see if the art students and business students, so the, the students doing art and the students doing business are dependent on each other. Now we did that already up, um, up earlier, but let's just do the test. Um, let's look at the prob let's see if the probability of A intersection B is the same as the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. And what I mean there is, is the probability of art intersection business the same as the probability of art multiplied by the probability of business? Well, probability of art intersection business is 8 over 60. Does that equal the probability of art, which is 20 over 60? 12 and 8 is 20. Multiplied by the probability of business, which is 24 over 60. And it actually is okay, 8 over 60. So actually both of them are 2 over 15 equals 2 over 15. So we can say, therefore, independent of each other. Okay, and in simple language, I have a whole class of 60 students. My chances of getting a business student, or choosing a business student from that um, group is a certain um, probability. If I actually just chose the art students, so forget about everyone else, just chose the art students, and saw what the chances are of choosing a business student from that group when it would actually be the same as choosing a business student from the whole class. Okay, so let's look at this one. Um, again, we have our basketball free throw and we have our penalty. Okay, so again, just like the, the information above, but I put it in a Venn diagram. Now, I want to test and see if these are dependent or independent of each other. So, the rule is the probability of we call it basketball intersection penalty. That must equal the probability of getting the basket free throw multiplied by the probability of scoring the penalty. Let's see, does it? Probability of basketball intersection penalty. Well, that is this here, okay, where they intersect each other. So that is 4 over 20. Now, is that the same as the probability of getting the basket, which is 8 out of 20, multiplied by the probability of getting the penalty, which is 9 out of 20. Well, this one is 4 out of 20, and this one I've calculated to be 9 out of 50. 
which is not equal to each other. So they're not equal to each other, so I can say, therefore, the events of basketball, sorry, if we won't say basketball, the events of scoring a basket and scoring a penalty are not independent of each other. Okay. And that, make, that kind of makes sense in real life. I mean, if we have a class of 20 people and I choose somebody at random, what's the chances of them getting a basket? Fair enough. But if I actually got rid of the people then that they got none of them and they just concentrated on the people that scored a penalty, well, the likelihood is if they scored a penalty, they probably scored a basket as well because they're, they're probably decent enough at sport. Okay? So I suppose that's what we mean by dependent of each other. So if I choose the people to score a penalty, they, they probably have a better chance of scoring a basket than if I just chose someone at random from the whole class. Okay? So uh, that's that, guys. Thank you.